Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over News I Missed. To start things off, while Bitcoin and Ethereum have continued to stagnate, I'll use air quotes for that one, it is clear that the decentralized finance craze is alive and well. In a single day, two tokens in this segment of the cryptocurrency market launched. One launched over 1,000% higher than its seed round price, and another gained around 5,000% in a day. I repeat, 5,000% in a day. Boys and girls, that is called a bubble. On the 18th of July, after weeks of waiting, the new DeFi project, Mstable, it's actually called the letter M and then Stable, finally released its native token, Meta, or the letters are MTA. In short, Meta is a governance token that will fully decentralize the Ethereum-based protocol, which is predicted or predicated on facilitating stablecoin swaps with low slippage and offering interest opportunities on stablecoins. According to Masari researcher Ryan Watkins, the public launch of the token, done through a new process called an IDO, there to go those letters again, was immensely profitable for some. An IDO is an initial decentralized exchange offering. Meta's purportedly was a site to be seen with an Ethereum user attempting to manipulate the order book to change narratives because that's how these things typically works so um the last couple of weeks have months have been quite fascinating within the cryptocurrency market we have a lot of reports that we are currently in the midst of an altcoin market an altcoin season an altcoin so and so we know that bitcoin's dominance is slipping steadily day by day because of the amount of new altcoins that are popping up on the market and how much the other older altcoins are also rising up dramatically in price i say this because and i'll be completely honest with you i know a lot of people probably clicked on the video because they thought that I had found the new, amazing, awesome, wonderful, spectacular cryptocurrency that was going to make them rich overnight. Understand? I don't know about these coins. I don't know about the MTA and I don't know about the IDOs and all that other stuff, but a lot of these coins are going to be absolute scams. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says, be wary searching for the next DeFi star was warned by a crypto advisor and i mean just even warning in general you have to understand and i and i'll and i'll show you something in one second just to highlight exactly uh what's going on because i've mentioned many times before that it's a mimic of 2017 i understand that there aren't millions of people who are within the cryptocurrency space who are watching my videos understandable uh however if you have the power within yourself to tell other people to start watching out for scams because this is going to happen, it's a very big thing. I remember in 2017, one of my very close friends started to get into the cryptocurrency space and I advised him, I said, look at these coins, about three or four coins. Only put your money into these. They are, these are the, the biggest, largest, most stable and they still have remained so. If you look at the market, you should know exactly which coins I'm talking about. He told his cousin, hey, my friend, who's been in this space for five years at that point, says, look at these coins. And his cousin was like, Psh, I know what I'm talking about. Put his money into these amazing new things that he found on the internet. What were they called? What were they? ICOs. Put his money into as many ICOs as humanly possible, around like three something thousand dollars. I don't remember the exact number, but it was in the thousands. Uh, and then within a couple of weeks, lost all of it because all these projects started disappearing. And a lot of the ones that he tried to get into because they were so hyped and had popped up largely in price had all started to deflate. And he was like, man, I lost my money. I don't know if you can, for those of you, I mean, if you can physically look at the screen without putting yourself in any harm, look at this chart. It is, it, it is a chart of the funds raised during the actual um, ICO craze that we had a couple of years ago. I'm going to replay it. This is what it started out as in, in 2017. Look at these bubbles. This is exactly what's happening with the DeFi space right now. Do you see this? Do you see this absolute madness? How many of these things popped up and how many other things popped up from them? I mean, it's just, it's just wonderful to look at. So the point is, um, please try to be wary because we are at the point right now in this market 
where a lot of our other altcoins, not even the DeFi coins, are performing exceedingly well. But as these coins continue to perform well and their prices continue to go up, even if the coin ends up hitting $22, $18, $6, it won't look as appealing to people for as new coins would that are $0.05, cents, $0.08, cents, $0.12. Cents. Well, I have $1,000 I can put into the market. I want that coin that's $0.12 cents because it's clearly going to do extremely well. And that's not how it works. So anyway, yeah, this news has, I mean, when you talk about news I missed, there were so many articles throughout the course of the week that had information just like this. This new coin went up by 1,800%. This new coin has outperformed Bitcoin. That's a very popular phrase as well. I don't know if they do it for, for, for the clicks. I don't know if they do it because they're actively trying to manipulate people, but a lot of articles will state things like, this coin has heavily outperformed Ethereum. This coin has made more gains than Bitcoin since October 2018, whatever kind of words they decide to use. And mathematically, yeah, it's true because these things are probably hyped up and pushed by the people who are creating them because, you know, guess, guess what the whole space is about? Come on. It's about money. So they're just trying to make money off of you by hyping up their new coin that they're also claiming is going to be wonderful, amazing, and fantastic. Anyway, that's the DeFi uh, warning news because I know that I, I, I assume three people are actually listening at this point. And the moment this video is done and other projects start popping up, uh, they're going to start jumping in. Like, it's, it's really insane. All of these bubbles, rep, like, they have the names of the actual projects. These things, I'm, I'm looking at some of these names. These things were supposed to be the new Bitcoin. Nearly all of them were supposed to be this new, amazing, wonderful thing. And that would outpace Ethereum, outpace XRP, definitely outpace Bitcoin and make Bitcoin the number five coin. Anyone remember Cash? That is Q-A-S-H. Anyone? Okay, no one? All right, then. Let's move on. Next up. The body for regulating digital assets in Japan, the Financial Services Agency, has whitelisted the Omisego Network's native token for trading. According to a 22nd of July announcement from GMO Coin, the Japanese crypto exchange is now offering trading for the OMG token. The addition of the coin on the exchange listed by the FSA in its role as Japan's financial watchdog, indicates that Omisego is the 27th virtual asset to be approved in the country. The most recent one before Omisego was whitelisted was the Huobi token in April. Uh, sure. Uh, so I guess the news is is that a. I, 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 I'll say it nicely, but I was gonna say, no. I'll, I'll say it for what it actually is. Um, a lot of countries around the world are trying to figure out which cryptocurrencies are safe for them which coins don't pose an issue to their monetary policies so that they remain in monetary control uh, japan is not the first country to do this there were many other around the world not even just within asia but within southeast asia last year we had a number of news stories that there were a couple of countries who were um, allowing around four coins only to be traded within their borders. Uh, there was one country, it was, I think, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, and I think Bcash, where I think the only coins that were allowed for people to use, because every other coin, if it's too decentralized, if it has too much of a, and I mean decentralized as far as even more so like being able to track transactions, this is usually what governments care about. So expect a lot of the countries who have allowed Bitcoin uh, and Litecoin to be traded to soon one day be like, no, no, sorry, they have private transactions. Uh, a lot of times you never even hear the, 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 the utterance of any type of a stable coin because it kind of goes against the government's fiat currencies. Anyway, I guess in the silver lining of it, the Omisego token is now available officially for trading in Japan. The other point of it is that a lot of i mean it's it's always you can still use these coins just more so for trading like you can still use them because they're decentralized networks and that's just how the news go. yay omise goes in japan now i mean it was before but now it's it's legal what has happened is this a it's a beauty show are, are these electrified coins 
I don't, what are they wearing? All right. That's, that's the weird photo. And let's move on. Oh, also in news. Um, and I, and I kind of regret not having all 45 tabs in here, uh, to slow down my computer. Uh, for some reason, there's this new phenomenon, and I'm not really sure where it's coming from. Um, a lot of websites keep writing things that Chung Peng Tsao has said, or that he thinks, but they're always like very obvious things. So for those of you not looking at the screen, this one says, and I quote, Bitcoin, better form of money than fiat. This was said by Chung Peng Tsao. This one says, uh, Bitcoin price has been extremely stable, will break out sooner or later. Also I extremely obvious. Uh, Binance CEO Chang Peng Tsao says Bitcoin has been really stable. I, um, I, I, I feel like he says things and they're kind of taken out of context, but there's a huge initiative to write articles about this man for things that he says. Not that he's saying anything wrong, but I feel like it's a waste of space to have 45 different websites write articles about something obvious like imagine chong peng tao going outside and it's raining and he's like water's wet and they're like oh crap write a new article right now and like were, were you wearing shoes when the water was wet and then we get an article chong peng tao wears shoes outside when it's wet so yeah we know that bitcoin is a better form of 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 fiat and we know that bitcoin's price has also been stable because we've all been here for the last two months looking at prices and it's obvious that that's what the prices have been doing. Anyway, that's the Chang Peng Tsao news. I'm not joking. You can like you can. I mean, if you if you care to have a gander, look around the internet and just type in Chang Peng Tsao like the last like three weeks. If you can, you know, do the time frame. Yeah, a lot of super obvious stuff has been happening, and Chang Peng Tsao talks about it, and then people make articles about Chang Peng Tsao talking about the obvious thing that has happened. We're, we're going to move on. Next up, at 11 a.m. BST or 10 UTC on the 21st of July, Robinhood announced that it had sadly decided to postpone its UK launch indefinitely. Aww. Robinhood's Market Inc., or just Robinhood, a financial services company based in Menlo Park, California, announced on the 7th of August, 2019, that its UK subsidiary, Robinhood International Limited had received a license from the UK's financial regulator, the FCA, to operate in the UK, logically. Robinhood's two US subsidiaries are the operators for the Robinhood platform, which allow commission-free trading, investing in stocks, options, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies from a mobile device or a desktop computer. Currently, this service is only available for residents, only available to residents of the US, logically. However, on the 4th of July, what, what? I'm just saying 4th of July. On the 4th of January, they kind of look the same. 2019 reported, is seeing the recruiting, is in the UK. And long story short, no, Robinhood is not launching anymore within the United Kingdom. Um, I don't know if any of you have shed a tear. I mean, I'm crying profusely right now over this news. Uh, not to be sarcastic, but we already have like 38 other services like this that many other places around the world can actually use already. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Robinhood, now don't get me wrong, I don't use Robinhood, but I'm going off of the last nine months in the comment section. I'm pretty sure Robinhood is the platform where you can deposit your crypto onto it, but you can't ever withdraw your crypto. It kind of just stays on there until you decide to sell it, and then you can only sell it back for fiat, which means that you lose your crypto. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, what? Uh, t tell me if I'm mistaken, and I will retract my statement. Um, however, I'm pretty sure it's Robin Hood that you actually have no control over your own keys or your own crypto. So, like I said, th there are many other websites and platforms not advocating for them, just logically speaking out loud, uh, that do allow you to withdraw your crypto and or have still control over your own keys. So, I feel like this isn't a major loss in some sort of way. And I'm, and I mean, listen, and the, the way that money works, I'm pretty sure in about, I give it eight months, nine months, we're going to have more news that Robin Hood has reapplied and has gotten the, the thing again. And now they're also going to try and relaunch in the UK. I, I think it would be interesting if they tried to not continue making money because they are a company and therefore they want to make money. 
So I'm going to assume that they're probably still going to try and launch within the UK, but um, don't shed a tear because we are in the future now. We're no longer in 2017. And we have tons of platforms where you can do all these things already uh, without having to rely on Robinhood because we're, we're in the future. Anyway, that's that news. Um, let's move on. Next up. The U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Command, or the USACIDC, is looking for a web-based application that will allow it to trace cryptocurrency transactions. According to public records, the U.S. Army is looking to enhance its cryptocurrency investigative capabilities. The Army says it needs the application to limit criminal activities where cryptocurrencies are involved. They said, the U.S. Army contracting New Jersey CCNJ located at Fort Dix, that is D-I-X, NJ is surveying the market for potential contractors capable of providing one license for one user of a cloud web-based application capable of assisting law enforcement to identify and stop actors who are using cryptocurrencies for illicit activity, such as fraud, extortion, and money laundry. The Army says it needs to track Bitcoin and other top cryptocurrencies that could be used for illicit activities. I don't even have to read the rest of that because you know exactly what it's going to say. Here's the actual thing that they put out. It's on beta.sam.gov. It says cryptocurrency investigative web-based application. There it goes right there. Yeah, so I feel like we shouldn't be surprised that this is happening. Um, because if we remember correctly, the news that we got around Monday or last last Friday was that Coinbase was working with the FBI, the DEA, and I think it was the CIA. I think that was the third group of letters uh, to um, use their technology to also track things. So I assume the army is just also trying to get into the game as well. Um, like I said, should we be shocked? No. Um, will this pose an issue for many people in the future? Absolutely. Uh, the more agencies we have coming forward trying to track cryptocurrencies only is going to push the cryptocurrency space into a private transaction sphere. And then things will get interesting as people are not happy when Bitcoin has private transactions. Anyway, that's that news. Um, like I said, no one should be clutching their pearls right now because we should all know that this was... I, I'm Listen, I'm shocked that we got the news. I, I, I just assumed that most of these things took place in the shadows and then we heard about them five years later. Uh, so, yay for transparency? I, I, I don't know. Let's move on. Um, also, in a lot of the news news, the latest update on the whereabouts of the former Australian chief operating officer of fallen fintech Germany company Wirecard, that was a huge sentence, says that he is in a, in a hideout in Russia, transferring large sums of Bitcoin. Ooh, illicit. According to a report by top German business newspaper Handelsblatt, who is uh, this man, who is currently wanted by three national agencies for embezzlement, has transferred significant amounts of Bitcoin since he escaped from Germany... Uh, Mars Marsilek is alleged to have set up dubious wirecard operations in Dubi. Sorry, that's Dubai, and fled to Russia with the stolen funds from wirecard accounts. He has been manipulating as the head of operations in East Asia. Uh, so listen, <laughs> here we go. Remember, I was like, hey, isn't it weird that we never have any news about Bitcoin in the news news? I.e., we know that PayPal is going to be offering and selling Bitcoin very soon. Nope, not in the news. We know that Visa and MasterCard are now going to be integrating Bitcoin into their platform. Nowhere to be found except for the cryptocurrency news. We know that the entirety of all the banks in the U.S. can now use cryptocurrencies or offer it as custody in some sort of way. Checks around for the news. Nope, not there. Oh, also shout out to the person. Um, I don't know if you were on Twitter or here in the comment section. I, I, all I remember seeing is words. Uh, who was like, yeah, I heard TMI say this and I checked the news for four hours. I'm sorry that you had to hurt yourself in that way. Four hours is a very long time to watch the the normal news. Um, and they were like, yeah, he, he was right. There's no mention of any of these things. It's kind of weird that the world's financial systems are all uh, diving into Bitcoin, but it's nowhere. However... 
um, for some reason, this made a lot of the the, the public news that uh, someone from Wirecard, who's now being hunted down, was transferring large sums of Bitcoin. That made the news immediately because Bitcoin then looks negative and people don't want to touch Bitcoin because it's it's associated with some guy who fled to another country and he's been he's been transferring large sums of money with Bitcoin, which we also know is illegal and therefore we should not be touching Bitcoin. So this was this was fairly popular news. Uh, I saw this multiple times in many places, even if it was like a snippet or like a like a 35 second uh, jibber jabber on the news about, you know, someone is being manhunted because they stole a lot of Bitcoin. And it's like, well, that's. I, 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 I feel like we're back in 2012, 2013, where for some reason, Bitcoin can only be associated with Mount Gox and or uh, marketplaces where people are buying things that are not allowed within their borders anyway um yeah that's also news sure i i mean can we talk about all the banks who are also laundering tons of money and other illicit things and also have boats traveling around the world to launder gold and money if you if you've never seen a, a documentary on um how financial institutions launder money uh, get ready because that's going to take up the entirety of your day. It's a, it's a huge rabbit hole and, and they do it so freely as well. This is part of the, part of the magic of it. They, they do it so effortlessly and then they tell you that you shouldn't do it. And then they do it like for billions of dollars and then they get caught and someone smacks them on the wrist and goes, no, no. And then that's kind of the only story that we hear about it because they're all in it together. Anyway, that's that news. And let us move on from this. Next up, where are the words? The Banque de France, France's, France's, France's central bank, has selected eight potential partners, including HSBC, Accenture, and Sabre Bank, in its hunt to modernize interbank settlement via a central bank digital currency. Ooh. As the institution heading the digital euro initiative, the Banque de France called on applicants in March to propose experimental central bank digital currency frameworks to both refurbish interbank settlement and lay the foundations for a digital euro. Now, per a statement from the bank, the applicants have been chosen and work is underway. The central bank's favored few include Accenture, HSBC, Sabre Bank, and Prosper US, as well as Euroclear. Sure, a Belgium-based financial services company is isness that is i z n e s isness isness a blockchain powered record keeping platform for funds liquid sharem oh my gosh who made <laughs> euroclear isness and liquid sharem a blockchain based post trade settlement for smes and french financial institutions societe generale is forged a tech platform designed to promote blockchain based activity we had news many moons ago uh, that no bank would be activating, initiating, starting any type of procedure for a central bank digital currency, and now they're all over it. So uh, it, it, apparently France is spearheading this entire initiative. They are the ones who are going to have their names on a plaque sometime in the future as the people who tried to uh, digitize the euro and then it failed. Uh, just thinking outside the box. Anyway, so yeah, um, it, it, it appears plans are underway. We don't know how far they're underway. Like, are they already testing it? A lot of the countries around the world who have uh, previously said no, and then yay, uh, to the actual uh, creation of central bank digital currencies have nearly all announced that they will not be made public from the get-go. They will simply run through many different companies and organizations kind of like testing it back and forth. I assume for remittances of some sort between them to test to see if the actual system is working because once again the last thing the government wants is to create something which i assume many of them already have created uh and then tell people hey you can use this and then they start using it and then the situation doesn't work or the app is you know really clunky and the people don't want to use the central bank digital currency and they simply go well bitcoin's a lot better and i mean people already love bitcoin and and, and cryptocurrency so <sighs> government can't have that Anyway, that's that news. I mean, it's fairly, it's fairly obvious 
that these things were going to happen. It's just a matter of time before they released them into the actual world. I assume we were, we were supposed to have seen uh, China's coin sometime this year. Question mark, question mark. And I assume by next year, if not 2022, this is when they will probably all be released at the exact same time. It's just I'm interested in the actual interoperability of them because I know that they're not going to do that correctly. Anyway, that's that news. And we're going to move on. I just like touched my microphone. That was weird. Next up, NEM, that is N-E-M, is following in the footsteps of EOS's voice, Peepith, and Read.Cash with its own social media platform, NEM Hub will reward social media content creators with distributions of its native token. Wow! NIM is taking a new approach to marketing with NIM Hub, a social media platform that will pay users to generate content. NIM Hub went live on the 15th of July, following an early release on the 12th of June. NIM Hub users can earn crypto by completing requested tasks or by producing their own content, such as videos and articles, distributing rewards according to each user's reputation and points, similar to Steemit. There is currently a marginal user base of 800 people, 400 active users on the social media platform, many of whom have connected their accounts to Twitter and Telegram to cross-post content. Those users receive about $10,000 worth of NEM per month altogether, not per person, or about $25 per active user per month. Didn't hear about this at all. Um, NEM is also a cryptocurrency from, I mean, from the long, long ago where uh people were told that this would be the new uh you know there's there this is one of the generational coins that was supposed to be the displacer of bitcoin and ether but and, you know here we go um however cool wonderful i hope these continue to pop up i was going to be cynical but i think it's actually a really cool thing um not telling you to use it and or go onto that platform it's more of a um i hope we continue to get more decentralized platforms like this i hope we have more of a way to continue posting on other platforms. It's, it's just, it's something, it's, it's quite nice to be able to have these. I'm shocked that it took so long, but I'd rather have them launching now than in like four years. Um, I think eventually we're probably going to have a good 15 to 25 different platforms like this across the cryptocurrency space, which will allow, I mean, some of these in the future may even become some of the largest platforms similar to what we have right now, but in a decentralized manner. Who knows what's going to happen, but yeah, um, like I said, I was going to make jokes, but I was like, no, it's, this is actually kind of cool. I, I hope we get more stuff like this, and we'll see what happens, because Steam it was super popular, and who knows, Nem Hub might also be the place to go as well. It also doesn't look that bad. I mean, I've seen, I've seen worse interfaces, to be completely honest. Why? My mouse was not moving. My, my mouse was like... Oh, you can't see my mouse because you're not here. My mouse was like stuck. Like it was, that was weird. Anyway, um, global tech giant Samsung is adding support for blockchain-based virtual world Decentraland to its wallet app. The Ethereum platform powered platform allows users to monetize and build a virtual world using non-fungible tokens or crypto collectibles. According to a decentralized announcement on Monday, the platform's native tokens, Land and Mana, are now supported by the Samsung blockchain wallet app. Uh, it could, yeah, here we go. It, it could simply be that a lot of the things that have been added to Samsung's platform or their blockchain phone, whatever, uh, have been ERC20 tokens. I think they, they first added Ethereum and then ERC20 tokens, so it makes a lot of sense that they would be compatible in this way, but I guess... Uh, Decentraland has also been added to it. And I think this also officially launched. I still haven't used it. I, I've been meaning to use it for a while now. I have no idea if it looks like this. It says Decentraland right here, but I don't know if it's really this pretty. Uh, I remember seeing it like a long time ago and it looked uh, beta-ish, but I guess I should probably check it out. Anyway, yeah, uh, Decentraland has been added to this platform. For those of you who really don't get it, uh, the point is, is that this is kind of like a, a world a decentralized world, get it? Where uh, you can buy land and kind of do what you want within this game. I think a lot of these are really going to catch on in the future. And I mean that in the 
most realistic way. Everything we do now is digital, nearly every single thing. If you don't have a child or don't play video games yourself, uh, you are not understanding how large the video game world is, how large uh, PvP games are, and all these other things online, and how deep people really get into these things. And then you couple that with something where you can make something as beautiful as this, and you kind of own land within this video game or within this blockchain system, whatever you kind of want to call it. And the idea is, is that you buy this land and you kind of own it. In, in essence, you can kind of build whatever you want on it. You can build uh, museums, you can build amusement parks and stuff like that. You can even have other companies contact you to say, hey, you have a huge plot of land near the entry point for when the game actually starts. Uh, can we advertise with you? Like, can we have, you know, a whole bunch of um, ads when people first come out to see our products? And I, I think these are, I'm, I'm not, I'm still not sure if Decentraland is going to be it. I assume they're probably going to have, if, if, if Decentraland really picks up, I mean, like really gains popularity, I, I assume in two years we'll have a, a Facebook land and Amazon land because they're going to try and also gain market share as well. Because every, every single, uh, every single major company has tried to have their own mobile gaming platform. So imagine a, a place where you can actually own land and that catches on digital land and they, they're going to try and create their own. Anyway, the point is one of these is going to make it in about 15 years. Not that we'll be kicking ourselves. I mean, you can't really tell when there's all these different platforms, but it'll be fascinating to, this is, this is the weirdest scenario because I spoke about this with one of my friends about the actual owning digital land. I currently don't own any digital land, but should a platform look like it's going to make it, I'll be honest with you, I will buy huge parcels of land. Uh, the idea that, imagine in like 30 years, like cryptocurrency is not even mainstream. Like it's as, it's as normal as breathing in air, just kind of everywhere. And everyone uses these platforms. And at some point, like you can pass on digital land to your kids. Wouldn't that be kind of weird? Like, you know how, like, people... I, I've seen it in the news before, where, like, certain people, like, this this mogul is inheriting, you know, 500 properties from his father who made an international real estate portfolio. Imagine, like, someone in the news being like, yeah, I inherited, you know, 9,000 acres of digital land in this game, and everyone's like, wow, he's really rich. It seems out of the realm of possibility right now, but then you look at our smartphones, and, the, and I mean, you're also l listening to me on a digital device... Uh, that is probably wireless, and it's made out of plastic, metal, and glass. So I think the future holds a lot of uh, weird things for all of us. Anyway, enough about Decentraland. I, I thought it was kind of cool. I think these are definitely going to catch on, especially if they make themselves pretty enough. Anyway, that's the, that's the Decentraland blockchain Samsung news, and let's move on. Why won't my mouse move? What's going on here? And it, th there's not even like a ball on the bottom. It's like one of those like red light things. I, I don't get why it's just not. All right. Anyway, to finish things off, amid the growth of stable coins in 2020, the cryptocurrency community is setting up an international stable coin organization in Switzerland called the World Stable Coin Association. Kind of obvious or the WSA, eh. the Geneva headquartered organization is to be launched by cryptocurrency exchange Virgo X okay, and blockchain markets firm Global Digital Assets or GDA Capital. The WSA announced this news to Cointelegraph a couple of days ago. Adam Kai, that is C-A-I, CEO of Virgo X, outlined that the goal of the initiative is to build a true, unbiased, Global association composed of all major stablecoin projects. I don't use the you 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 can't use the word unbiased when it comes to humans because humans automatically have bias for many different things. According to Kai, the WSA is already in discussion with major stablecoin providers Tether, USD Coin, DAI, and Husta. That is H U S D. Kai noted that these companies are targeting are targeting joining the WSA by the end of 2020. While the association is now incubating early stage stablecoin projects and remittances, and launch, white papers. Huh. I, 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 I wonder, hmm. I was going to say, I, I wonder what the true goal of this is. I mean, of course, it's money. But I wonder, are they trying to make a sideways parallel cryptocurrency decentralized platform for an alternative to world currencies or are they simply creating this organization because government members have told them 
hey, get in line. And now they're trying to join the, stable, the major stable coins together to make sure that they fall within regulatory compliance. I feel like it's more part two with like a sprinkle of money. Uh, we'll see. Like, like I said, you can't really be unbiased because in logic, if these companies and corporations have been into and or promoted and or paid for some type of a stable coin and there's another stable coin across the street that's just as big as theirs they're going to choose the one that they put money into first and that is uh cause you know, that's bias anyway um we'll see how this turns out i didn't assume that stable coins would be mega ultra popular but apparently here we are i still thought before and i still think now that a lot of countries are probably going to start adopting stable coins as opposed to making their own cryptocurrencies, which is going to be incredibly weird. And we give the stable coin makers way too much power. Like imagine like Zimbabwe announcing that they're going to be using Tether. That'd be insane. Like that, that'd be, that's, that, that, that's a bit too much. But I mean, we also kind of have that with the whole Libra thing. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, when Facebook announced that they were going to be launching their coin, about two months later, multiple countries, not not cities, not so-and-so countries had gone to actual Facebook. We had the news uh, that they were looking to like actually um, provide support for their, for Libra. And that's like, well, you're pretty much just kind of announcing that your current fiat currency is so terrible that you want Facebook to be your central bank. Oh boy, I can only imagine the conversations that are actually happening behind the scenes. It just has to be a complete, I'll say cluster. That's a nice way of saying it. Nice big cluster. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Oscar Maldonado, Utopia569, Moonman High, XRP, Jared Schneider, Monero, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Moher Moroni, Master Ventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Crypto Joe, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3 d Damien Setsuna, Nick Kanaya, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, Hitchess, Everyday, and Kyle Skips Leg Day. Yes to Crypto. Body Make Boat Face, Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Arfmedic 17, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger and Macho, Nisa on Crypto with Lana, Crayola, Michelle, URL, and Valero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. At the moment, for those of you who are unaware or are simply not looking at the screen, right before I started this video, uh, Bitcoin was at 9,700, 9,600 and something dollars. It is currently at 9,964. Uh, as like right before I was making this video, it, was, it shot up. I was looking at the screen in awe for about a good seven minutes. Not joking. It went from 9,680 to 9,700 to 9,750 to 9,800 to 99 and it has kept on going up and I was literally holding my breath sitting here. Uh, it popped over 10,000. My friend, as I was texting my friend, he was texting me saying that it went to, I think, $10,114. And that's when um, Tether started spiking up as well. Because I assume a lot of people were like, no, it's too high. I started putting in sell orders. So we passed by 10,000. We have not had a detrimental drop like we've had before in the past. Previously, when we've passed by 10,000, we either had the news that Coinbase or BitMEX crashed. The, that news hasn't been released yet. Um, the other part is we, we normally would go back down to 9,700 immediately. Not slowly, actually immediately, it would completely crumble. But it looks like we're still hovering around this number. If we can get a really good weekend push, I think the number that is constantly quoted is $10,400, that that is the actual resistance level. And if we can pass by that, then therefore we are in mega bullish territory and therefore Bitcoin's going to start to skyrocket. And when this was happening, all the other coins were also going up. Bitcoin was up by, it was like 4.5, like 5% or something like that. When Bitcoin has fallen, therefore, at this moment by half of a percent, maybe 1%, and the other coins took notice immediately, 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 immediately. So, we'll see where the rest of the day takes us. Not going to hold my breath. I'm, again, because I already was lightheaded earlier. Uh, like, I was actually holding my breath. Like, I'm not half joking. I was so, like, I was watching this, like, $500 increase out of nowhere. Um, yeah, the other altcoins are, it could also be that people are selling off their altcoins because they're going to be buying Bitcoin. 
A lot of these Satoshi prices are also just decimated right now. I do hope that you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever on this crazy planet you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching or listening and i will most certainly be talking to you all soon especially if bitcoin goes over 10,400. expect to hear back from me once again thank you all once again and yeah talk to you all soon see you